everyone here will be able to quickly and automatically generate a model for whatever system you would like, well, nearly every system you would like to, uh, to study. Um, I would also like to encourage everyone in the room or online remote to ask questions if you have burning questions related to what we're talking about during the workshop as we go. Um, if you have side questions, you can, of course, save them to the, um, to the lab and, and raise them up after, after the session. Um, if I focus on gas phase kinetics, if I look at fuels, which is what we do best currently in RNG, I would say that in the past we found <coughs> something in the ground, some black liquid, and we reacted to that. So we built an engine and saw what works, and that was more or less an error, a trial error engineering. That's how we could refer to it. Perhaps soon, perhaps in the near future, we'd like to have a choice of fuel. So imagine you can come with your car to the gas station and you can choose the fuel you want to, 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 um, to use today. You can have a flexible engine depending on the price of the fuel um, at every given day. To do that, we need to, to be able to um, optimally design an engine based on the fuel. And that might be just one example where you need to actually understand all the chemical phenomena occurring during the process here of combustion. So I would say that here one of the missing links is to have such a predictive tool, like RNG, the reaction mechanism generator. I see here there's something here blocking the slide a little bit. Can I remove it? We'll live with that. Right. <laughs> we'll just keep it there. Um, so the point of RMG is to have a predictive tool to generate mechanisms for us. We have lots of unknowns that we need to give data to. Um, we need to figure out all intermediate species. If I gave the example of a fuel, we all know we have fuel coming in. Well, the fuel mixture is, is complicated as is, right? It's hundreds of species by itself. We all know we get out, uh, out of the engine, out of the effluent, CO2, water, nitrogen, maybe some oxygen, maybe some unburned fuel, maybe some pollutants. It is complicated as well. But in between, the system is even way more complicated. Lots of radicals, lots of many other species in the intermediate process that we need to know about when we want to simulate such a system. So we need to know all the intermediate species, all the reactions, that could occur between them, different reaction families we can think of, and all rate coefficients. You'll notice that here we added significant in parentheses. Um, you don't really need to know all species, all intermediate species. Some of them will be insignificant. So you need a method, a well-constructed, automated method to distinguish between significant and insignificant species. Same goes for reactions. Some of the reactions are really, really low rate. You don't want to include them in your model. But there's a catch here. In order to make that differentiation, you need to know the rate of that reaction. Otherwise, how would you determine that it's insignificant? So you need to know all rate coefficients. That's a lot. You can't run all experiments on all possible reactions, even for one system. And by Murphy's Law, you won't have the rate for the system you're interested in. Um, also today we can make quantum calculations, ab initio chemical calculations of electronic structures, make a uh, determination of calculated thermodynamic and kinetic quantities. Doing that is laborious as well, although we have efforts to automate that process. And it's very time consuming to get accurate numbers and definitely not for the size I just showed you uh, for the magnitude of species and reactions we need to consider. And that's where RMG comes, comes in. RMG is an open source tool, meaning that first it's free, and second the, the code is open to everyone to see and make suggestions and improvements, and it's open to the community to work with it as a as a tool in the community to predict chemical reactivity. 
RNG will construct comprehensive models uh, consisting of elementary chemistry, elementary reactions, um, and it will give some rate, it will estimate the kinetics and thermal chemistry data important for the simulation for all reactions and all species. It doesn't mean it will do it perfectly. You don't always have to do it perfectly, and during the workshop we'll discuss when you need to have great numbers and when you can have okay numbers, and, and that will be okay for, for what we're doing. We can have great numbers for all kinetics, for all the rates currently. Um, and let me know, of course, if you have any questions while well, let me go. Um, the way RNG works, or the way you will input your parameters into RNG and what you will get out of it. So if we think of RNG right here in the center, first you tell it your, what your system is, what the chem chemical composition, and what are um, the physical um, and the physical parameters like temperature and pressure you are you care to simulate. Next, you give RNG access to libraries. The libraries are already built in in the software and they are extensible. And um, what is a library? I think it sounds vague. So if you look at it, library is just a text file. Here's an example of a kinetic library. It says here what reaction we're talking about, H plus O2 giving O plus OH. And what are the kinetics in an Arrhenius form? There can be different forms in our library. Currently, our database is just a collection of these text files, and RNG reads them and, and parses the data out of them. So you give it access to the desired kinetics and thermodynamics libraries already built in, or your own, if you'd like to generate them. Next, you should give RNG there are several parameters in the input file that you'll see during the workshop, but maybe the most important one is a tolerance. Remember before we just discussed that we need to know which species are significant and which reactions are significant. And that tolerance parameter determines exactly that, the significance. Um, how does RNG use the tolerance? First, it defines a characteristic rate at any point in time as the um, square, uh, mean, I'm always getting that wrong. Someone help me. Some root squares, root or root of some squares, root of some squares, all right. Root of some squares of all net fluxes of all species in your system. Uh, that will be defined as a characteristic rate as a function of time. Um, then RNG asks for every new species it encounters to check whether it's significant or not it will see its ratio to the characteristic rate. It's in, if it's above a certain tolerance, let's say our tolerance is 5%. So every rate which is close to the characteristic rate in the system, above 5% will be, let me say that again, every species with a net rate, a net flux, close to the characteristic rate, to the characteristic flux, about, let's say, 5% of that characteristic flux will get merged, will get um, eventually into your model. Species with fluxes so low, less, less than what the user defined, in our example, 5%, will not get incorporated into the model. So that's the tolerance and that's its effect on your model. Let's keep it simple. Low tolerance, let's say 1%, will make your model what larger or smaller. If I have a small tolerance of 1% versus 5%, will my model be smaller or larger? Larger. Larger, that's right. So I have more reactions above that fresh threshold. And I'm misspeaking again, it's not reaction, it's species, net flux of species. More species will have a net, net flux above the lower threshold. So that's the effect of tolerance. It principally determines, it takes the size of your model. Next thing we need to tell RNG is when to stop the procedure, when to terminate. We can have a selection of termination criteria. It can be either time, chemical time, not the time it takes computer to run the simulation, that's the 
time we're simulating in the chemical system, it could be several microseconds. It could take RMG hours to generate the model, but we're generating, we're simulating a chemical system that lasts for, lasts for several microseconds. For example, it could be way longer than that as well. Um, second termination criteria could be, for the example, conversion. Let's say I'm starting with a fuel. I would like to simulate the process until the fuel disappears and I only have 30% left of the fuel. If I said disappeared, so let's say 1% left of the fuel, so my criteria will be 99% conversion of that fuel molecule. And last but not least, and I think maybe very important for many systems, is flux ratio. Um, take the highest flux in your system. Once the flux, the characteristic flux in time reaches, reaches a certain percent of the highest flux, that means your system is no longer reactive. Probably most of the things you care about are gone or have reacted or are at equilibrium, so terminate there. So you can also give any combination of the termination criteria, the first one to hit, RNG will stop. So these are our criteria. RNG outputs a kinetic model. Principally, it outputs a list of reactions with respective kinetic rates and a list of species with respective thermodynamic data. And in formats, you can use in either Kempkin, Cantera, or the Reaction Mechanism Simulator, which has been developed in our group, one of these. And we will have a dedicated session in the workshop to discuss only these um, tools to process the model generated by ARMG. Uh, any questions by me, uh, so far? Yes, please. Is there a way of reducing the kinetic model that IMG generates for every reaction? Excellent question. So I'll repeat the question if it wasn't heard uh, remotely. Is there a way to reduce the model that IMG generates? Uh, yes, there are ways to reduce. I think we have a tool on, in RMG. Are do we, uh, I think we have a reducing tool in RMG. But there are other packages and, and other methods for for reduction. One of them is built in, in Kenki, others are independent. Yes, there are many ways in the literature uh, to do that, and we also practice that as well. Uh, for example, if you need to run a CFD, computational fluid dynamics, you'll need to have a minimal, a skeletal model, and there are ways to do that as well. RMG won't do that automatically. Uh, our point of view is to give the user the true chemistry to the tolerance they define. So everything we really think is happening. But for some applications where you are limited in computational power, you definitely need a skeletal model. The answer is yes, but not automatically in RMG. Thanks for the question. Um, so I think the best way to really understand, understand what's going on is to visualize the process. RMG defines a core and an edge. Um, the example I'll be giving here is Ethanol oxidation, and here are the conditions, 1,000 ppm fuel, stoichiometric with oxygen, no nitrogen, so it's not in air, it's been done in argon, at the conditions listed here, and it's an actual simulation we ran just for an example in RMG, and I'm going to simulate the first iteration, the first test RMG takes. So RMG defines a core and an edge, and first, it will put all of your reactants in the core even argon, it puts everything in the core. Next, it asks, what are all the reactions, all the possible reactions that could occur here, either unimolecularly or bimolecularly? What are all possible reactions it knows about from libraries, you get it, or from families it has access to, and we'll discuss that procedure later on as well. So here's a list of all possible reactions RMG thinks that could happen. Quite a lot, right? Quite impressive for just two reactants. Um, so that's what RMG thinks might happen. And next it will ask which of the species in the edge has the highest flux given that it's about the tolerance we just found. In this case, that species was methyl radical, two species, and that radical as well. And then it will repeat the process 
um, iteratively. You have a new core now. Great. What are the reactions possible? What new species do you have? We'll repopulate the core, as you just saw here in the animation. Eventually, for the conditions we use, we use a tolerance of 1% um, determination. The termination rate ratio was 0.1%. It took RNG 30 minutes on the normal laptop to run, and it determined that your core consists of 42 important species and <coughs> nearly 600 100 reactions. Altogether, the core and the edge, altogether, RNG explored nearly 800 species and more than 1,500 reactions. So that's just one example. And I hope that explains a little bit uh, the, uh, the main algorithm. Just to give an idea of scaling, of how large the core and the edge could get, um, for methane air system, a very small system, we use a tolerance of 5%, and uh, termination conversion criteria of 70% conversion of, of the fuel. It took less than a minute to run. Uh, we had about 30 species in the core. And just a little bit about that in the core and edge. Um, acetylamine oxidation, we had a tolerance of 2%. Termination was a time constraint, not conversion. It took about 10 minutes to run, and we have nearly 90 species and more than 2,000 reactions in the core, uh, which is considered still pretty small. Pentane oxidation, we're moving to larger systems. We have C1, here we have C2 and nitrogen, here we have C5. Pentane in an in NOx environment, the model is larger. It took about eight hours to run. We have 150 species, almost 1,000 reactions in the core. For C12, now we get, I thought the numbers will even be larger. The tolerance is 5%, termination is 0.1 second, and C is high. I thought we would even have larger, a larger number of species. Maybe the tolerance um, could be much lower to have a more representative model here. And you can see overall the amount, the, just the, the span of species and reactions RMG explored. And again, all these examples pale to the graph I just showed you of 10,000 species and even more than that in terms of reactions. These are just examples. Um, so we discussed the tolerance criteria that RNG incorporates species into the core based on their flux. There's another criteria, I'll just go over it briefly. Um, it's called the surface algorithm. Um, RNG checks whether a species in the edge has a significant effect on the concentration of species in the core. If it does, even if its net rates are not that high to be important in terms of flux and to be included in, into the core, but if by including it into what we call the surface, but you can think about it as part of the core. If we incorporate such species and all its reactions in the core, and only by doing that we have a significant change to this concentration of species we do think are important, we will include that species as well. Um, and there are um, parameters to deal with that algorithm in the input file as well of RNG. And we might touch that later in the workshop, but just to be aware, there are many other features to RMG. And if you think of RMG as a black box, right, you give it some data, that data could be experimental results, could be ab initio calculation, you feed this into the black box, eventually you get some detailed representation, prediction of the physical reality, what we call a model, and you can simulate it and run it at different conditions. If you open that black box to see what's inside, first in RMG we have a database for kinetics and thermal. So if you have a precise reaction that you're interested in that RMG detects, and you have rates for it, RMG will take it. If you have a species, you need thermal data for it, and you have it in your library, RMG will simply grab it. If it's not directly, explicitly given in the database, RMG will estimate it. For thermal, 
Um, actually, this slide is not that updated. For thermal, primarily we use group additivity. We'll go over it soon really briefly. There's an entire session about that later. I said it's outdated. We, do, we recently incorporated machine learning for thermal predictions and not doing all kinds of species, but uh, it does address um, most of them. And I think we didn't include heteroatoms uh, or um, I'm not certain about radicals, but it does do a lot of, of uh, thermal data um, estimation. Um, so that's for thermal. For kinetics, rate rules, we have trees in the database. We'll go over that soon. That's just a representation. And we have the core and edge algorithm. These are just a bird fly point of view of what RMG does. There are many other features to it. Maybe one of the important ones, RMG will give you KTPs, not only KTs. What it means simply, it will estimate a high pressure limit rate, but it, for pressure dependent reaction, it will actually calculate on the fly the pressure dependent rate, which is very important for many species at one atmosphere. Um, we can do on the fly quantum chemical calculations. We're currently enhancing that using new tools. And we have an old module that does that. Soon we'll have a new one. And we have uncertainty analysis being incorporated. And, and that's like, again, a bird view of what RMG does. Eventually, you have your model. You should check what you're sensitive to. We will have an, a session dedicated just for sensitivity analysis. We'll discuss it. But you'll see what your model is sensitive to, and you might want to calculate it, adjust these species or reactions and feed it back into RMG to make an even better model. We'll be discussing that in the workshop as well. Um, so just very briefly how RMG estimates thermal. For example, using the group additivity method, you have a large molecule that you don't have enthalpy, entropy, and heat capacity, and from all these you create the Gibbs energy change. And you don't have these parameters for a certain molecule, RMG will break it down into groups and will have data in its, in, in its database for ascribed for each group. Just summing these groups will give us the thermodynamic data, thermodynamic property we're interested in. I won't elaborate about that too much, it's just a taste. We'll, we'll see these methods later on in the workshop. Um, another quick um, discussion of how RMG estimates rates. RMG has many kinetic families defined in it. If you have a reaction and if you have rate form and it's not in our library, RMG will estimate it using its rate rule. Here is a partial list of our families. You can just see H abstraction, radical recombination, disproportionation, and so on. And let's look at our addition multiple bonds, for example. Let's see if I had. RMG defines a tree structure with nodes for each of the reactions in the, sorry, for each of the reactants in that template. So what you see here is just a template, right? Something, we call it R1 and R2, something with a double bond reacts with a something else, R3, which is a radical. So we have a tree structure for each of the reactants with weights assigned to the nodes. So here's a tree for R equals R. And one of the Rs, one of the something here, could be carbon atom, could be oxygen, and so on. The multiple bond could be double or triple. If we go into final resolution, let's elaborate on the C equals R. Of course, we have final resolutions for all nodes. That second R could be any of the other atoms. That's just an example. You can go into finer and finer details until you reach a very specific node. Not all trees are that highly detailed. We'll have a, I, I know that bring, brings up a lot of questions. We'll have an in-depth discussion of rate estimation in the workshop. That's just to understand how RMG makes an estimation. So we have a very specific node for the RR. We have a very specific node for the, for the respective tree of the radical. So here's one, for example. And we can have 
make predictions or make an estimation for a rate for that particular reaction by combining these two nodes in the tree. Again, we'll discuss that much more in detail in the workshop. I apologize for the second time because I know that's not enough to, to really explain the idea, just to give a taste. And selected projects we have done recently. Um, we made a model for methane. Um, we are proud of a model we made for JP10, which is a jet fuel. We were the first to show its kinetic decomposition. Um, we have heteroatoms, so sulfur and nitrogen. Um, the molecules here, but you can just have a taste of the project. Um, that's it. So what RNG principally done, if I want to conclude? RNG generates kinetic models that are based on quantum chemistry in our database or experimental rates we already have. Um, if the rate isn't in our database, the re if the reaction isn't explicitly given in our database, it will estimate a rate for it and will overall give a predictive model for, for large systems. And here we, we do emphasize combustion or pyrolysis. I haven't touched that. Um, it's easier to have lower uncertainties in predictions at high temperatures. That's primarily why we started studying combustion and pyrolysis uh, systems. Uh, we also do low temperature uh, currently, and we also do liquid phase as well. Uh, the uncertainties there are, are higher. Uh, you might need more to, to run more calculations, um, but that's why we do focus on high key, um, or focus so far on high key mainly. Um, RNG builds big models. You can refine them. You can reduce them, as we just discussed. Okay, but it aims at giving the entire picture as, as to the best of its knowledge. Um, our approach um, is to see quickly what's been predicted, um, refining the model, and building on our current chemical knowledge and making um, <coughs> and estimations based on our current or on our current knowledge. And again, I see that in this slide we emphasize again combustion chemistry. We do more than that. And and, and I should mention here on the last bulletin point, the models aren't precise. So don't expect the model prediction to pass exactly through the experimental points on your graph. That will not be the case. We will, we will give some examples soon in the workshop to emphasize that as well. Um, the models are predictive, and the discrepancy between what we think is happening physically and what actually is happening physically motivates us to continue working and to continue improving RNG, which is an ongoing project. Um, it does perform, I think, very good for systems it was trained for. For new chemistry, you might, for, you might spend some time um, um, maybe adding a specific reaction family that is important and is not captured well, maybe calculating some rates um, or enhancing um, the software uh, more. So that's what drives us and keeps us uh, going forward. Um, please let me know if you have any questions so far on the introduction. I, I think that was the last one. Let me know if there are any questions. Yes, please. So my first question is, the reactions from the core. Reactions from the core? Yeah. When you, like, when RNG goes through each reaction, does it use a recursive kind of Algorithm such that I can tell what the subsequent reaction would be in the edge and also the subsequent reaction in the core. So, what is that recursive scheme it uses if it does use one? Um, what, so, if I can rephrase the question, you're asking what is the scheme to. Can, can you help me again? Can you repeat it? I'm so trying to. Oh, okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's definitely using a recursive scheme yeah. where it takes whatever the current core is and then just basically does the same thing again and again, keep on adding in all the new species that are occurring. 
Okay, so, so when you does it the first time and you get like um, an output, does it take that output as a starting point for the next? Okay. Yeah, it just okay. keeps going and going like that. Okay. And it just keeps going until you achieve the tolerances that he showed. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll repeat that for our remote uh, audience. Um, the question was whether the algorithm is recursive. Sorry, it took me a while for just to understand the question. Uh, the answer is yes. RNG starts with um, a small core, just our reactant. We'll increase it, we'll add into the core the most important species it thinks it should be added by flux criteria mainly. Then iteratively, it has a new core, it will repeat it exactly that procedure to expand the core farther and farther. Each iteration, it will have new additional species in the edge, which also means new reactions. Yeah, and all using the same scheme of checking our libraries that user defined or using our rate estimation. 